Now I'll be making a, a signature drink of, of the American Mark at the moment, and uh, it has to be from our new menu. Um, our new menu is a coast-to-coast -coast journey of Britain. Um, but more than that, it's a journey of character and content. And what's unique about this particular menu is each section, of which there are five, uh, comes with a unique serve. Now the purpose of this serve is to give the guests a sense of place. Not only of the liquid history in which they're ordering, but also a sense of the fact that they're ordering uh, drinks that have been inspired by people, by character and content. Now each section of the menu has a very strong, distinct style and I think if I was asked to create a signature drink of the American bar, uh, it would have to be from the Art Deco section of the menu, whereby we rewind to the 1920s, where the American bar was really coming to, to prominence as a cocktail bar in Europe, thanks to American bartender's influence. And it's a section for me that typifies simplicity, elegance and decadence. And that's really what Art Deco is all about. Um, half the hotel is, is designed with Art Deco in mind. And this particular drink is inspired by a very famous interior designer, uh, born to Greek parents in Scotland called Basil Ioannidis. And uh, you can still see all of his design in the Savoy Theatre today. He helped with the lobby uh, many, many years ago too. And he's a very famous Art Deco influence designer. But going back to the serves of the drinks and how that really gives the guests a sense of where they've ordered from and what it means, um, the inspiration for the section, I present you the serve for our Art Deco section of the American Bar. It's, it's a serve that screams to me those three key words I said, simplicity, elegance and decadence. But it does so in a really understated, subtle way. The design is very much inspired by the, the kind of motifs you see around the American Bar, whether it be the stylings around the mirrors or the design on the tables. So it adds a really nice touch of uh, consistency to the design of the drink itself. Um, the way this drink is served in particular, it's very eye-catching. It's a very classic style of drink with a, a spirit, modifier, vermouth and bitter backbone, but it delivers flavours in quite a unique way and especially plays on salt to add a real complexity and depth of flavour to otherwise quite classic flavour combinations. So, I'll start making the drink, the most important part. Use block ice. The texture of this drink is really important. As it's quite a rich drink, you need to have quite a, a nice thick texture. But if it's not cold enough, then it becomes a bit sickly in the mouth. So you need to be very uh, very aware of the temperature at which you're adding to your drink too. We'll wash the ice once again, just to remove any impurities off the ice. Now I mentioned that this particular interior designer was born to Greek parents in Scotland. So to honour his Scottish heritage, we use a dash of smoky Isla whisky to add herbal complexity to the drink, a dash of pesho bitters. Then we take to where he was from in Greece. We use mastika, just five millimeters. And it adds sweetness to the drink, but also works really nicely with the chocolate notes you get from the cocoa nib, the mousse, which will come later. Then we add a salty cacao which we make ourselves. It's really simple, but the salt helps cook through the sweetness of the drink and deliver a, a kind of different style of flavour in the mouth. Rather than just kind of complex rum and chocolate combinations, you get a nice salty finish on the back part. Cocoa nibs are a brilliant ingredient. Um, they're actually toxic and dangerous in large quantities, but if you infuse them uh, with vermouth, you get the really nice herbaceous complexity of vermouth, but the really nice bitter, rich chocolate flavour coming through nicely. And the bitterness is actually the most prominent flavour in this particular ingredient, so it actually isn't as sweet as one may uh, think on when looking at the ingredient list on paper. And then we look to the main spirit, which is the captain, a really elegant rum adding complexity, a nice bit of sweetness and mouthfeel as well. Stir down. Again, you want to get it nice and cold to make sure that the drink itself has that has that really nice mouthfeel. It's not too sickly, not too syrupy when you're enjoying it. Because of course the experience doesn't just start and stop when the drink gets put in front of the guest. It also continues all the way through from to the last sip, just from the first. The drink is served in a Chantilly glass. Over block ice again to keep that dilution and temperature balanced. Thank you. 
You have a lovely rich brown colour coming from the ingredients. But to finish the drink, and to add a really nice uh, visual element to it as well. We garnish the drink with a caramel mess, which is hand spun here every day um, by the bar team. It adds a lovely visual element, and when the lights are down in the bar at my favourite time of the evening, and the candles are on the tables, it presents a really nice visual element. You have the light flickering from the candles, it hits the gold of the caramel and reflects off the reflective surface of the serve as well. And for me, this is our deco. It's elegant, it's simple, it's eye-catching, and it's, uh, it's a style that people want to be seen drinking, and that's what Art Deco American Bar is all about in the 1920s. So, if you ask me for a signature drink, I present to you the Basel Union. Please enjoy.